This is for my folkers who got bills overdue. This is for my folkers, um, check one, two. This is for my folkers, never live like a hog. Me and you, toe to toe, I got love for the underdog. This is for my folkers who got bills overdue. This is for my folkers, um, check one, two. This is for my folkers, never live like a hog. Me and you, toe to toe, I got love for the underdog. I raise this glass for the ones who die meaninglessly and the newborns who get fed intravenously. Somebody's mama caught a job and a welfare fraud case. When she breathes, she swear it feel like plastic wrap around her face. Lights turned off, this the third month the rent is late. Thoughts of being homeless cry into you hyperventilate. Despair permeates the air and sets in your hair. The kids play with that one toy they learned how to share. Coming home don't ever seem to be a celebration. Bills stay piled up on the coffee table like they decoration. Heaping spoons of peanut butter, big ass glass of water. Make the hunger subside. Save the real food for your daughter. You feel like swinging haymakers at a moving truck. Feel like laughing so it seems like you don't give a fuck. You feel like getting so high you smoke the whole damn crop. You feel like crying, but you think that you might never stop. Homes without heat stiffen your joints like arthritis. If this was fiction, it'd be easier to write this. Some folks try to front like they so above you. They tear this motherfucker up if they really loved you. This is for my folkers who got bills overdue. This is for my folkers, um, check one, two. This is for my folkers, never live like a hog. Me and you, toe to toe, I got love for the underdog. There's certain tricks of the trade to try to halt your defeat like taking Tupperware to an all-you-can-eat, returning you shit for new saying you lost your receipt, and writing four-figure checks when your accounts deplete. Then all your problems pile up about a mile up. Think about a partner you could dial up to help you out this vile stuff. Whole family sleeping on a futon while you clipping coupons, eating salad trying to get full off the croutons. Cross town, the situation is identical. Somebody getting strangled by the system and its tentacles. Misconceptions raise questions to be solved. A lot of dope boys is broke. A lot of homeless got jobs. You can make eight bones an hour till you pass out and still be ass out. Most pyramid schemes don't let you cash out. They say this generation made the harmony break. But crime rise consistent with the poverty rate. You take the workers from jobs, you gon' have murders and mobs. A gang of preachers screaming sermons over murmurs and sobs saying, Pray for a change from the Lord above you. They tear this motherfucker up if they really loved you. This is for my folkers who got bills overdue. This is for my folkers, um, check one, two. This is for my folkers, never live like a hog. Me and you, toe to toe, I got love for the underdog. You like this song because it's relatable. It's you in a rhyme. We go to stores that only let us in two at a time. We live in places where it costs to get your check cash. Arguments about money usually drown out the tech blast. Work six days a week, can't sleep Saturdays though. Muscles trembling like a pager when the battery's low. And you still don't know where the years went. Although every single shift feel like a year spent. And you could write your resume, but it wouldn't even mention all the life lessons learned during six years of detention and how you learned the police was just some handicappers on the ground next to broken glass and candy wrappers. So don't accept my collects on the phone. Just hit me back at the house so I know I ain't alone and we could chop it up about this fucked up system. Homies that's been killed, how we always gonna miss them. It's almost impossible surviving on this fraction. Sip a 40 to the brain for a chemical reaction. You gotta hustle because they trying to push and shove you. I tear this motherfucker up since I really love you. This is for my folkers who got bills overdue. This is for my folkers, um, check one, two. This is for my folkers, never live like a hog. Me and you, toe to toe, I got love for the underdog. In so, so, I, I started out as an organizer, became an artist. I, uh, one of the worst compliments slash insults that I got as I became an artist was the idea of 
how people identified to what they called conscious hip hop at the time. Now maybe it's woke hip hop or whatever. But it would always go something like this. Like, I love that stuff y'all do. You know, it makes me feel good. But you know, I got to listen to that real shit. And what they would say is that gangster shit, that trap shit. There's various forms of this conversation that come up. And basically what it translates into is that what music that they see is, is connected to uh, some sort of social movement is fantasy. And music that says you can go and sell a rock and make whatever the cost the thing or sell whatever and make $10, make $20, that's real. It's actually connected to a material movement, connected to a movement that actually has something to do with how people put food on the table. This is also connected to, as an organizer, one of the main things that makes it hard to get people out to uh, an action or to be part of a campaign is like, I would love to do that, but I got to pay the bills. And this brings me to my main feeling about the left and progressives and radicals uh, at, for the last 40, 50 years, which is that radicals and progressives have ran away from actual class struggle. And um, so to explain my point, I'm going to try to do this really fast with a, a history that's very reductive and essentializing, but that's what artists are supposed to do. <laughs> so in, in the 20s and 30s, there were a million card-carrying communists in the United States. And there were, there were uh, massive strikes going on in the West Coast, on the, in the Midwest, in the South, in all of these places that we now call red states, they were red states. J. Edgar Hoover said places like Utah and Montana were hotbeds of communist activity. In this, and, and they were at the time, and in this era, because of this, because there were massive demonstrations where tens of thousands of people would come out and they were real demonstrations. They were the meaning of the word demonstration. This is only a demonstration. This is only a show of our power because this many people will shut down your industry tomorrow. In the wake, it, it, because of that, we got things like welfare, social security, Medicare. We didn't get it because the right person was elected in office. We got it because there were revolutions going on all over the world and there they, and they thought it was a viable possibility because of class struggle that a revolution could go on here. In the, but for, during World War II, oh fuck, okay, I got very little. Anyway, <laughs> basically, <laughs> basically, the, because of the splits that happened in the radical movement during the McCarthy era, and, and because of revelations about Stalin, things broke up into all these little groups. In the 60s, those little groups became the new left. The new left were more outward than the folks before and saying we're revolutionaries, but they also stopped organizing around labor. They started focusing on students and focusing on cities. And for the first time, you heard the students are, revolu are the revolution, and it was not true. It was not true anywhere historically in any other revolution, and it was part of what brings us to right now where, and, and during that time, foundations started becoming a major part of what the left is. And foundations that, and there's a paper trail of this, that started with the idea of let's fund anything that has any answer to the problem except class struggle. And so for the past 40, 50 years, radicals, and revolutionaries have been hiding in art, have been hiding in academia, and, and have changed what there is about the movement to be about, to, be, to, to, to claim victories in the ways that we speak, and to claim victories in all of these, in, in, in these things that otherwise would be esoteric, where the mass 
ba our mass base, the people that we are claiming to represent, they are worried about how to pay the bills. And, th and those are the things that they will act around. Those are those things that they will act around. The question is this, when, uh, Mike, when Mike Brown happened in Ferguson, had the left been organizing around labor and radical left, not liberals, not let's elect a Democrat, but the radical left organizing a revolution, but organizing in labor in, in the St. Louis area, if they had had a general strike, would we have had a different outcome than simply what we've been doing for a long time, and I've been part of that, which is we don't like the way things are, people should know, right? Because the folks looking at us, deciding whether they want to get involved or not, those folks are saying, I don't know if that works. But what does work, because we know how capitalism works, what does work is to bring their profit to a halt. Yeah. And, and we've, been, we've been misleading people by saying, all you got to do is show up to a demonstration that changes the world. All you got to do is speak the truth. We've been misleading people by saying that. We've been not giving them the correct analysis of how power works under capitalism. So, my question is, how do we get people to engage in class struggle as both tactic and strategy to address issues of poverty, racism, and economic inequality? Thank you.